my name is Jeff Best and I am with Intuit Face. And like all of you, I suspect I am sequestered at home. Uh, these are challenging times, partly because there's not very much we can do, right? It's the main weapon uh, against the virus is patience and passivity and uh, just being careful, which forces you to be exposed to all the things inside the house that you find very annoying, <laughs> right? These uh, little tiny trivialities that become a big deal because you just can't escape them. I can tell you that for me, one of the big problems I have is my hair. Talk about triviality, I understand, but I do have a 1970s Afro and it's taking everything I can do to tame it. So uh, thank you for bearing with this uh, Welcome Back Cotter hairstyle. I did also notice that the camera makes my beautiful blonde locks look gray. Uh, that is an artifact of the camera. I tried to correct that. Uh, I am a blonde haired person. Uh, I'm here to introduce you to my company software. It's called Intuaface. Uh, I think we are the most recent addition to the BrightSign family, uh, meaning you can install our uh, runtime on natively on a bright sign player to run in what we refer to as interactive digital signage. I think we're different from the typical bright sign partner. The typical partner is attempting to solve the needs of traditional non-interactive digital signage. When Intuaface was born seven years ago, it's not a new product, been around for a while. When Intuaface was born, from day one, it was all about interactivity. It was not focused on traditional broadcast signage. It was focused on kiosks and wayfinders and curated art exhibits, uh, digital deployments that required some kind of interactivity. And that's been in our DNA, as I said, from the very beginning, which I think makes us a unique partner. What you're getting with Intuaface is a software platform enabling you and your clients to create with no code at all experiences delivering any kind of interactivity, not just touch, sensors, beacons, speech, computer vision, all these different types of human machine interaction can be incorporated in your bright sign based digital signage. It's a big deal that we're very proud of and I'm gonna spend the next few moments uh, introducing you to what it is we actually do. So this is just uh, a list of our customers using Intuaface to build that interactive content. So again, the way we position Intuaface, it is a no-code platform dedicated to the creation, integration, deployment, and analysis of interactive digital experiences. Uh, it's about transforming the physical space using digital interactivity. Uh, let me walk through some of the ways we think we bring value. Certainly core to that value proposition is ease and speed. This is what we, we contend is we make it super simple to build very modern interactive content. So Intuaface incorporates all different kinds of human machine interaction, certainly touch, but we do work with any kind of sensor like a Nexmosphere, one other, another bright sign partner. We do work with speech, we do work with computer vision, you can RFID, NFC, and beacon technology, and keyboards, you know, you name it, you can work with it Intuaface, and you're not writing code. You can create very sophisticated, uh, interactive and responsive workflows at the edge. So on the devices, running in the field, in the museum, in the, in the store, at the trade show, in your office, uh, that's where the processing occurs and you can make it highly reactive to any kind of interactivity and really to any kind of event. You control every single pixel of a project. Again, we're coming from the interactivity world not the traditional signage world. In, in a Face, you control every single pixel of your design. It's your design, your storyboard, your layout, your content. No two experiences look alike, I promise you. When I go to a trade show, savvy in a Face customers, you cannot tell it's in a Face. That's how much control you have. Uh, with in a Face, you can establish real-time connections to any cloud accessible data source service or device. If it has an API, Intuaface can talk to it, and if it's a web API, we can automatically create the integration. You don't have to know what a web API is. And you can imagine if your digital deployment is going to be interactive, the more personalized that interaction, the better, right? It's not for some generic customer, it's for Jeff. And by making it personal, it makes it sticky, makes it more relevant, and Intuaface makes it easy for you to create those integrations, real-time integrations. 
Analytics. With Intuit Face, you can collect and visualize using charts and dashboards, the data enabling trend identification and business insight. It's one of the beauties of interactivity. You have things you can measure, right? For traditional signage, your measurements are inferences. And I'm excluding any kind of interaction, any kind of sensor like a camera. Traditional signage, all measurement was inferences. We all know analytics are important. All signage platforms are starting to introduce support for different types of sensors to collect information from the environment. And Tua Face has done it from day one. And not only can we collect all this information, not just from the interaction, but from the context. What's the weather outside? What's the sports score? These things might influence decisions in the moment. And all of that information can be collected and you create your own charts and dashboards with our own analytics feature. It's under the same umbrella. Everybody knows you should measure. Most of us don't know a good way to do it. We built analytics directly into the platform so you can build your own charts. And a few integrators out there, maybe it's even a service you sell for your clients, a key performance indicator service. Finally, uh, trust. So Intuit Face is about a month as of the date of this recording. Intuit Face is about a month or so from formal ISO 27001 certification. This is a global standard ensuring that we are protecting your data, that it's confidential, it's, the integrity is, is maintained, and it's constantly available. So it's a promise to you, to your IT organization, that anything we touch is safe and secure. It's a nice stamp. So that's our value proposition. You can see we're coming from a different place. We're not coming from traditional signage. We're coming from the world of kiosks, of interactive experiences in physical locations that are meant to be interacted with. And uh, we've had a lot of years to get it right. So what are the benefits to a user? Uh, we have, based on actual studies with actual clients, we have shown that you can find up to 80% cost savings versus custom development. You don't use Intuit Face just to do a traditional sign. I can make a retail point of sale kiosk, a curated art exhibit, employee training, uh, anything you want, you can create with Intuit Face. We're not selling templates or pre built apps. So when you have this huge array of capability and, and potential, when you compare that to custom code, it's 80% cost savings and it's 60% faster. So organizations, rather than spending large amounts of their budget and their resources on writing code by using Intuit Face, we slash time, we slash cost, and you're meeting or exceeding anything you could have done on your own with custom code. It's a bold promise, I know, but we do it. Uh, so with Intuit Face, for example, you can do rapid and iterative prototyping. It could even be a pre-sales tool where you're sitting with your prospect, building out some scenarios with Intuit Face, which becomes the starting point for the actual model that you build. Uh, you can get instant feedback. It's not a development tool where you're writing code and submitting it and uh, cranking out builds. And No, no, no. The second you build it, it's ready to go. And you can show it to your clients, show it to your boss, and say, is this what you meant? Is this what you wanted? Is this what you wanted uh, where we needed to go? And you can quickly iterate through it. Of course, there's a scale benefit here as well. If it's faster, cheaper, if it's uh, less costly to build these things, Maybe you can carry a greater burden. Maybe you can do more projects. If you're a sales team, maybe you're building more sales pitches. Maybe you're doing some cool stuff at trade shows. If you're an agency or an integrator, maybe you're just bringing in more clients because you can scale, right? Uh, again, there's a lot of agility here, not just pre-sales, but even post-sales. It's very easy to make changes. If you want to put a period on the end of the sentence, it takes seconds, and it doesn't cost any additional money to do it. Uh, and finally, if you're an agency or an integrator, if it's cheaper to build it and faster to build it, you have a very compelling sales pitch, don't you? You can deliver or exceed the expectations of your client and what your competitors can deliver, do it at a lower price and still clear a higher margin than if you're doing custom code. Again, this is version 6.5. This is not my pitch for some VC money. Uh, this is the real deal, and, and we certainly encourage you to use it. Uh, I'm going to do a quick demo, and uh, this is pretty bold because uh, we don't have a lot of time together, but I keep talking about how great this product is, but you haven't even seen it yet, or some of you have it. I'm gonna show you how to build some aspects of the experience you can see on the screen right now. Uh, this is available in what we call the marketplace. You can download this thing yourself. You can play with it yourself. You can see how we built it. Uh, the way this works is, imagine you're in a photo gallery and there are three exhibitions currently available in the gallery, and I can pick, for example, nature, 
and nature will take me to the list of uh, images, the photographs in that gallery, and I can swipe my way through this gallery, and any picture I like, if I tap it, I get a copy of that, and I can manipulate that image. There's a button in the upper left, if I tap that, it brings me home, and then I can go to the vintage collection, which is a new set of photographs, and here, there's even a little more information. Not only can I swipe through these things, but I can get additional information, like who created it and how much to buy it, that sort of thing. So is that a traditional digital sign? No. Uh, but these days, if I can touch a sign, is it a sign, is it a kiosk? It's a meaningless distinction, right? I want to quickly show you how to create that experience. Um, don't consider this a tutorial. <laughs> We don't have the time for that. So you might see some things that could be a little confusing. I'll try to explain them, but bear with me. The point here is ease and speed, right? That's the point. So I'm creating a new project. You'll notice it's for a full HD display. You can do landscape or portrait. You can do any size, including multi-screen display walls. Uh, okay, so I'm creating a brand new project and let's reproduce some of that experience we just saw. I'll start by dragging in this image which is the background image. Remember that brick look in the background? In a two face, I'll just right click it. Uh, made it. I made this my scene background. Uh, you're controlling every single pixel of this design. If you remember, there was a logo in the upper right hand corner, and I'll put that over here, resize it a little bit. See what I mean? There's no notion of zones here. You're controlling every single pixel. It's a WYSIWYG editor. Some of you know WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. Uh, we had two, uh, let's put the two buttons on there. So I'm going to do two of these items. Uh, these two buttons, and I'm going to resize these guys. We'll do 530 and 420. I knew in advance that these button sizes would make a lot of sense. Uh, and I can align these things if I want, just to make sure they're properly aligned and it seems to be the case. And then I will do one other thing. I'm going to add a text asset. I want to put a little title here because this is for our gallery, right? And so in this case, we call it the Steel Frames Gallery. Uh, I can make the font, whatever, we'll make it 90. Of course, this is black on black, that's not very good. We'll make it white. And uh, we have lots of choices here for fonts. I guess we'll do, there you go, why not? So here's my sort of button home screen, right? Let's center that there. So, each one of these buttons is going to send us to a new scene, all right? Let me duplicate this particular scene. I have now a second scene. It's the same contents. I duplicated the scene. I'm now looking at my duplicate. I'm going to delete these two buttons, and now I'm going to add the images. Remember, we had that asset flow of images, that sort of iTunes album view. Let me grab these 10 images, drag them into my experience, and then here in the experience, Bear with me, again, it's not a tutorial, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into that flowy uh, uh, presentation technique we use. I'm gonna turn this into a group, which is one kind of collection. I'm gonna turn that collection to what we call an asset flow. And then I'm going to quickly try to make this pretty. So we'll, we'll make this the appropriate width. So we'll go scene width, uh, being picky, but let's get that down there. And I wrote down some numbers here. So let's go to the properties of this asset flow. We're gonna put the fourth item in focus. Notice as I manipulate properties, the visuals update in real time. There's some other properties here that help me control the way it uh, looks. And I'm gonna make the items bigger because it's kinda of hard to see them, right? There you go. And we have two other things I'd like to do on the bottom right of what we call the properties panel. See, we've got those arrows in the asset flow there. I'm gonna deselect show controls, those are gone. One more thing, we have this sort of container behavior category. Again, not a tutorial, but follow me. In the bottom right, tap item to open. Remember how I tapped an image and it opened up? Check it out. Tap item to open, bottom right of your screen. So every time I tap an item, it should open up. So this is what we call the nature gallery. So this is the nature gallery. And okay, we can do, I think we had something, I liked this font. So we'll go to Portico and we'll do, there you go. So we have a nice, nice new font for the gallery. One last thing before we move on, 
That button in the upper left, remember that button sent me back to the home screen. Every time I tap that button, I should go back to the home screen. Right click it, I'm adding a trigger. See the bottom of the pop-up? In a tour face, we have a notion of triggers and actions, events and the results of those events. Here, I want the event to be when that image is tapped. See here, I have lots of trigger choices. There's hundreds of triggers in a tour face, hundreds of actions. When that, trigger, when that image is tapped, then scene to scene navigation, go to the scene named, well, I didn't give them names. I could have, I didn't give them names. So we'll say scene one and we'll use a crossfade. So if anybody touches that button in the upper left, they're gonna go back to the very first scene with the two buttons, okay? One more scene, duplicate. Now I've duplicated the nature gallery. We're gonna do the vintage gallery. Let me delete that. I don't have to configure the button in the upper left anymore, that image, it already has the trigger back to the home scene, so that's good. This I'll call vintage gallery. And I think we had a different font here, Portico Vintage, which looked pretty. So let me get Portico Vintage. There you go. We have a prettier one. In this case, I don't have static images. I want to refer to a data source. In Tua Face, as I mentioned, you can work with any API. Your data can be in the cloud. It can be in any content management system of your choice. In this case, it's in Excel. So it's going to be local. This spreadsheet you see here contains information about each image, including where the image is located. Well, I can show you. I got a lot going on, but let me see if I can show you. Did I double click that? Maybe not. That's uh, the fate saying, don't show you Excel. The spreadsheet references all the images and information about those images. I'm just gonna drag in the spreadsheet. Should I import the images too? Yes, we'll import the images. And look what it's done. It has automatically created a visualization of information in the spreadsheet. Now, if you look on the left, there's name, artist, price, and image. These three fields in the spreadsheet, are, think of them as columns. These three columns in the spreadsheet are defaulting to a white font, which is a black font, which is why you can't see it. So in real time, I'm manipulating the visual representation of the content coming from the spreadsheet. Now, I can manipulate this stuff as if it were local. Any aspect of the font, the presentation style, I can change all these things. If you look, I can even change the order. So notice how I'm changing this template to make sure everything looks proper. Again, this could be coming from the cloud. It doesn't have to be from Excel. Visually, it's the same exact thing. Now what I'm gonna do for the sake of this webinar is I'm not gonna show those fields. I'm just gonna show the image. So let me reframe the template size so it's specific here. Then I'm gonna change the way it looks, okay? I'm gonna to try to make that asset flow again, so I'm gonna change it to an asset flow. I am again going to resize it to the width of my screen. I am again going to manipulate the properties of this asset flow to make it look right, which again should be four, 391, and 0.9, and the item size should be 765, 600, so all these numbers would, you know, you, you predetermine those things as the designer of your experience uh, and works. So one last thing, let me go back to scene one. These buttons need to point to the two scenes with the galleries, right? Well, you already know how to do this. For the vintage, add a trigger. When it's tapped, go to the scene named scene two. Again, I could have named them. I just didn't for this webinar. I'll make a crossfade. And then, oh, actually, that's vintage. <laughs> so we want to go to scene three, because vintage goes to scene three. See, that's why you should name your scenes. And then nature will add a trigger to send us to scene two. See how easy that is? Crossfade. Let's test my work. I'm going to push play. See the triangle up top? I'm going to push play. Let's go to nature first. I tap nature. It takes me to the nature scene. I can swipe through the asset flow. Remember, tap item to open. Tap item open. I'm going to click the steel frames image in the upper left. Tap. It takes me back to the button scene. Now I'm going to go to vintage. Remember, that's coming from a spreadsheet. If I change a spreadsheet, this experience is going to update in real time. Here we are. So I have very quickly built this gallery of photographs that 
is very modern looking, very intuitive, and I did it quickly while being filmed, <laughs> right? So if you have time and good content and a good idea and a willing participant, a willing customer, it's amazing what you can produce. In a way, Intuit Face is like Lego blocks. It's an unlimited, it's a, a limited number of pieces with an unlimited number of ways of putting it together. And you can see how quickly I built something. It's not a sign per se, uh, it's some sort of interactive kiosk. Uh, and look how quickly I was able to build something that was visually pretty interesting. And under the covers, very simple to put together. So let's talk a little bit about moving forward, how you can get experience with Intuit Face. First of all, for a bright sign, Intuit Face runs on model XT3, and I think we're XT4 and XT3. Uh, and uh, well, I know it does, XT4 and XT3. We're also working on the XT4 and the HD4. So uh, that's probably going to come, but you know how software is, so I'm not going to commit to it per se. Certainly our plan, but for Series 4, the X-T4, for the Series 3, the X-T3, you can do that with Intuit Face today. Uh, if you want to get started, just head to our website. Uh, our website's like a giant data sheet. There's tons of information there and, and videos, and uh, there's so much content there that you can look at, including access to a, uh, uh, the ability to freely evaluate composer, the editor that I've been showing you. Totally free to use it, 100% of capability at no cost. Uh, we have lots of online documentation, certainly dedicated documentation about how to do, for example, uh, provisioning of Intuiface using Control Cloud or Bright Author Cloud. You can do uh, provisioning using Control Cloud. Uh, and that's all you gotta do. You provision with Control Cloud and now player is doing what it always does, including supporting things like remote deployment. So you don't have to be anywhere near the device and you can remotely deploy your experiences to bright sign boxes anywhere in the world. Just a classic provisioning process using Control Cloud. As I mentioned, tons of information on our websites you can learn about Intuiface. If you go to intuiface.com under the Learn menu, there we have a virtual showroom which gives you examples of how to use interactivity. We have uh, tutorials and, and videos to help you get up to speed. Over 400 articles in that online library I mentioned. Lots of webinars uh, under the Get Help menu. There's free support. There's a user community. I mean, there's all these things you can do to self-enable. And of course, if you have questions, not only can you talk to the support team, but you can just go to directly to the sales folks using info at. Uh, last major point, this is about packaging and licensing. We are a direct sales model. You buy directly from us through our website. Uh, when you go to our website, you'll discover there's only three things you can buy. You can buy Composer, which is the editor. There's Player, which is the runtime. And then there's Analytics, which is an optional add-on enabling you to do data collection, chart creation, that sort of thing. Uh, Composer, used to create these interactive experiences, it's one Composer is enough to build an unlimited number of experiences, an unlimited number of changes, unlimited number of deployments, unlimited number of players. There's no relationship between the number of Composer licenses you have and anything else you do with Intuit Face. The only reason to have multiple composer licenses is you have multiple designers working at the same time. Otherwise, you can just move the license around if you want. Player is platform independent. There's not a bright sign player. You just buy player uh, from our website and you buy as many as you have devices running at the same time. 10 devices, 10 players. And of course, there's volume discounts and multi-year discounts and all this. Stuff. Again, analytics is optional. You don't have to do it. You'd be crazy not to do it to run your project by gut feel, but you're allowed to do it. Uh, but if you decide to, decide to use analytics, one, one seat, uh, not only for all of your projects, but even if you have secondary accounts, which you would have as an agency or an integrator, your clients would have what we call secondary accounts. And all of these accounts are one single analytics license. So they're all kind of grouped under that. So again, if you want to get started, head to intuitface.com. There's tons of material there, plus the free edition you can evaluate. Certainly, if you have questions, in addition to the online resources, there is the ability to just email us, and uh, we're happy to get back to you and talk things through. All right, guys, that's it. I know it's a lot of information, a bit of a fire hose, but I wanted to make sure you had a good understanding of Intuitface, what made it unique, I think, for you and for, for your clients. I can tell you we're very excited to be a BrightSign partner. It's a wonderful device uh, with a huge level of popularity. I can tell you it's great for us, and hopefully you'll feel the same way. 
Uh, you can certainly imagine in this new health climate we're in, the notion of interactivity other than touch is fairly important. And Intuiface gives you a good opportunity for wrapping your arms around that and delivering it to your clients and to your audience. Thank you so much for having me. I was very pleased to be here.